So this is going to be uh, an interactive thing. I think it's, I've seen Danny do it before. It's a lot of fun. I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. I know you guys like to talk, so I think it'll be uh, good for everybody. Uh, so without further ado, Mr. Danny Pessy. <laughs> Ah. Mm. Dude, that song's sick. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. So I was watching uh, Black, Black Mirror or whatever, and do you guys see the episode where he goes to space and they had that old French song playing? I, I typed in like old French music. And like this lady's famous and she's like dead now, but she's got some bangers. So uh, it was in Inception. Have you guys seen Inception? Okay, yeah. all right. So uh, thank you guys for coming. My name's Danny Pessy. I've, uh, this is pretty much my life's work. I got out of high school and started doing this. So I'm gonna teach you guys some stuff. Now I don't wanna talk to you. This is gonna be a little different. The, the style of training you've received so far is take in, write notes. Now what I wanna do is, is have you guys engage with somebody else and start role playing. So it was my last couple of years, I was a regional and I was traveling around to different markets and helping do some exercises to help guys improve. And so this is a great exercise to help you guys get polished. So today's subject is how to increase your polish. And so the thing is, is when you're teaching people, you can, I can get up here and I could drop nuggets on you all day, but at the end of the day, you're gonna go home and you're gonna forget most of it, and then you're gonna use one or two things and that's it. So what I found is if you're managing and leading teams, you wanna get them involved. Just like in sales, sales is, a buy, is, is a, a, an engagement sport. It's not something you sit on the line, sideline and talk and the customer hopefully at the end says yes, you gotta get them engaged. So the same thing is, is with you guys, I wanna get you engaged with me today. So by a show of hands, who's ready to play full out for the next 45 minutes to an hour that I got with you, okay? All right, everyone, raise your hands, do it. I promise it's worth it. Okay, so um, what we're going to do is we're going to do an objection workshop. And how this is going to work is, in a minute, we're going to go over every single objection that you're going to get in the game. Who, by a show of hands here, is a first-year rep? Dude, you guys are going to love this. So imagine tomorrow, or six months from now, right, you're going to have to go and fight Conor McGregor. Off a show of hands, who would be freaking scared shitless to go and fight this guy right off the bat, right? Okay, but what if, what if I could show you guys every single move he's going to throw at you and show you one or two ways to counter it and then put him on his ass virtually every single time? Who would be then a little bit more confident and fired up to do it, right? So unfortunately, there is no fight and there is no uh, chance to hang out or get with Conor McGregor. But there is a, a, a sport behind this game. The game is, is defeating the client and getting solar on their roof. And so I found by overcoming all of the objections first and having three ways to overcome it, that's truly gonna build your confidence more, more than most things that you can do. Because when you first started driving, remember when you got onto the freeway and you were kind of scared all the cars were flying by you, right? Now you don't even think about it. You're texting and you're on a phone call driving and you're jumping on the freeway. So why is that? You know what's coming and you're prepared to come and handle anything that's thrown at you. So what's the difference with sales is this job, literally there's probably only five to 10, 15, maybe 20 things the customers can tell you why they don't wanna do it. And all you have to do is think of three ways for every single way that they're gonna tell you why they shouldn't do it and have those prepared at the drop of a button or a drop of a dime so that the customers can feel it. If you wanna build trust in your clients and you want them to be like, oh shit, this guy knows what he want, is talking about, it's with professional-like reflexes. So when you go into a battle, someone tries to punch you and you block it and throw a counter, it's the same as when a customer throws an objection at you and you block it and you counter it with something. So that's what I wanna teach you guys today. I'm gonna to have you guys go through what you do. I'm gonna have you go through what your partner does and then I'm gonna go through what I do. And at the end of this, you guys will have two new talk tracks for every single objection that you go through. And if you practice, drill, and rehearse this, it can sound natural. So next time when your customer hits you with that objection, you already know what to say, how to say it, and have it come off smooth. Because if you get hit with an objection and you can let it roll off the tongue and act like nothing bugs you at all, that customer all of a sudden stops giving you these nonsense smokescreen objections and starts listening to you. Do you not think a customer knows if you suck ass at this job? <laughs> Guys, they see right through it. 
So how do you get through it without having the skills? You don't have to spend your whole life knocking doors like me, okay? You could basically practice drill and rehearse this enough so that it comes off so fluent, you're like, bro, this guy's good. And when they see that you've got that talent, their BS nonsense goes down and their trust goes up for you. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, all it comes down to is trust. And how you can build trust is first with yourself so that when you get an objection, you know how to fling that shit right back in their face. So let's go through it. I'm gonna get a microphone, we got a mic runner. Um, we're gonna go through and we're gonna get a couple objections, but for the time being, I'm gonna get some stuff from you in a minute, but let's start throwing out objections and my handy dandy uh, writer behind there is going to uh, start taking notes on everything. So let's just start throwing out objections and we're gonna write them down. What's an objection you guys get when you're either setting or closing? Not I'm too old, okay? We've got not interested. Now some of these are gonna be the same and I'm gonna funnel them under so you can see it. Because guys, right now this is a test and the test is on the doors, we're in here and we can cheat. You know what we have going for us? Our customers aren't practicing right now. Good offense, write this down, good offense beats good defense every single time. Put your phones away, because I promise you this next 45 minutes I'm gonna need you engaged, because I'm gonna ask on you and stuff and you guys have gotta be able to give back and forth to me, okay? Good offense beats good defense every single time. We're gonna come up with three ways on every single objection that they can come up with, and then they're gonna literally have nothing to say at the end of the conversation because you guys have destroyed every single thing that they can come up with, and there's no reason why they couldn't go forward with it, okay? So the good offense is good defense, okay? I'm too old, not interested. Let's hear some more. It's too expensive, I'm moving. Holes in my roof. Waiting for new equipment. Too busy. We have two old up there already. We're starting to hear the same ones. This is nice for us. I, I got to think about it. Not right now. Not right now. That would say I need to think about it. So we'll keep that as that one. My keep. Bill went down. My bill went down. Well, I'm, I'm training here, jackass. Will you give me a break, okay? He said he said it's an objection. You're ugly, and I no one caught on to that. So I just. I want to do my own research. Tough crowd. I want to do my own research. Bills are too low. I had a bad experience. Are, do you have all of the lists so far, Nick, or is this just? Okay, cool, no problem. I'm, uh, we already heard moving. What? I'm renting. Okay. I've had a bad experience. What else? It's a scam. What else? Putting in a new roof first. A pool. Okay. Brandon Solar. Friend and Solar. Okay, I'll do it myself. You're the sixth guy at my door. Well, your, my, your wife must love that, sir. <laughs> you what? Newer technology. Yeah, I think we have that one already. I want to keep supporting my current utility. I love my current utility company, said nobody. <laughs> really? Yeah. Wow. Just the other day. Really? Wow, what a dumbass. Yeah, someone's got to pay for all that death. I'm a PG&E employee, okay? That's the same as I love PG&E, so we'll keep it simple. What else? I've already looked into it. I want to get some more bids. If it's government incentivizes bullshit, all right. I wonder what side of town you're knocking in. What else? What? Excuse? <laughs> oh, okay. I was going to say security. Get this fucking lady out of here. Okay. I don't like the way they look. Okay. What else? I'll wait till it's free. I'll wait till it's free. All right. What else? We had bad experience already. Good one. What else? It's going to fail. It's going to fail. I don't know what that means. <laughs> oh, the solar industry is going to fail. I never have heard that one. But fuck it, put it up there. What else? Oh, wait, I can hear. Is my company going to be around long enough? Cool. What else? My bills, I think we had that one already, but good, you are correct. No one's going to say that. Get out of here. <laughs> Guys, we're, like real ones we're going to hear. All right, come on. Yeah, I got drunk one night and licked the inverter and my friend electrocuted himself. I'm not getting solar. 
okay? It's just, this is Chico, guys. There's some weird people up here, all right? Okay? All right, what else? I'm all for solo, but my wife hates it. All right, the spouse. Okay, so what do we got? We got like 19, regardless of the weird fucking one offs we're never going to hear. Okay. What else? Okay, we got roof, yeah. Can't afford to cut the trees. Okay. What else? I don't, want to finance. I don't want to finance anything. That's a good one. What else? Renting. Renting, we have that one already. What else? Cool. So is that cigarette, sir. Put it out. <laughs> EMF, uh, that is a good one. Not going to get too much. Only rich white people worry about that. Oh, don't get me started on the rich white people. Oh, God. I had to sit next to Mike O'Donnell for an hour and oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> damn boomers. Jesus Christ. God damn. You should have seen this guy last night. He was trying to get his presentation together and he's like, I can't figure out the fucking computer. And I'm like, you just got to shake it and press undo. And he did it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thank you very much. Thank you very much. It was so funny. Oh, man, nothing's funnier than a 55-year-old dude trying to figure out technology. So, all right, what else? I don't want to change. I don't want a smart meter. I don't think I hear that one too much. I don't want to change. Leave out the smart meter. I don't want to get that one too much. All right. Thought we already have the, I don't like the way it looks. She referred to me as ugly and then changed her statement earlier. So, Okay. We got it? We're doing another project. We're doing another project. Okay. New move in. New move in. Don't have bills. Can't afford it. Can't afford it. We had that one earlier. Refinancing. Uh, refinancing your home. That's a good one. Okay. So, the best. Guys, we are literally, this is our full time job, and we could come up with 25 things. That's it. So all we have to do is realize there are only 25 things we're going to say, and then they're going to, there's maybe one or two weird one-off shit, but you don't need to practice that. Okay, the point is, is what I want you guys to do today is practice harder than the game, because if you practice harder in practice, the game seemed easy. And that's what Michael Jordan always talked about, is he practiced so damn hard in practice that the games were easy. We all played sports growing up here. Raise your hand if you played sports, right? How many days a week would we practice for a one-hour game? every single day for a one hour game. So you would practice typically six hours a week for one game. For the game would last about an hour or two. So basically you would spend five times more practicing than you would be playing. Is that a fair statement? Yes. Right now are you guys spending five times more practicing than you are playing? Yes or no? no. Okay, and then you wonder why you have no money. Your bank account Sorry, guys. Your bank account is a direct reflection to the value you add to the marketplace. Nothing more, nothing less. If you don't like what you fucking check in and see, stop checking Facebook and start facing your checkbook. Yeah, you like that one? So that's the thing. That was hard for me. Giving up Facebook was tough. I'm more of a bumble guy myself, but... Just kidding. But that's what I'm saying, guys, is at this point, you guys do realize this have a life expectancy and we are literally in, you're seeing it happen with NEM. You know there's another bill that's passing in California that's gonna be a solar tax based on income? That's gonna add anywhere from 30 to 50 bucks per month? Okay, guys, they are coming up with ways to screw us. We have to come up with ways to get better faster so that we can gain market share and take care of our families. This is not a job that's gonna be around in 30, 40 years. Guys, none of you are gonna be selling solar or doing anything in the solar space 30, 40 years from now, okay? So the thing is, that's not a bad thing, but let's take what we can and utilize it and then move on to whatever's next. And the thing is, what's cool about solar, and I was doing a gig this summer, last summer with uh, Jordan Belfort, the Wolf of Wall Street, and he was talking about solar and how well it makes sense, is solar works good for three things. It works good for you and the company, it works good for the customer, and it works good for the planet. When you understand these three concepts, you can shove solar down somebody's throat, and in 25 years, they're gonna thank you for it. So my conviction is super high, and whenever I hear these objections that come up, I rephrase the objections in my mind as not an N-O. 
It's a K, they do not K-N-O-W what I'm doing. I have a deeper conviction and desire to get panels on their roof than they have a deeper conviction and desire to get me off their doorstep. So when they start giving me bullshit, I smile and I thank them. Because if they give you an objection, what are they doing? They're engaging in you. And you can't catch somebody if they're not engaging with you. So when I hear an objection, I'm like, hell yeah. And then I know that there's three ways I can overcome each objection, and they roll off the tongue so smooth, and the customer knows, holy shit, this guy is so good, I'm not going to throw any crap at him again. I'm going to listen to him because he's a polished professional. So right now, we're going to put up all of these objections right now. So um, while Nick's figuring that out, um, hopefully Mike's not up there trying to help you. So... <laughs> So we're going to put up every single one of these objections. So then I want you guys on each objection, A, B, and C. I want you to fill out A, how you would overcome this objection. Then we're going to turn to a partner, and you're going to share what you said, and then they're going to share what they said. And there's your B, and then I'm going to give you my C. And then now, after you leave here, you are going to have a playbook on every single effing thing a customer is going to tell you when you knock on their door or sit at your table for a proposal. If you want to have confidence, you can predict every single damn thing these clients are going to say. So when you show up there, are you nervous anymore? It's like getting on the freeway again. You know everything. And the problem is, is why guys don't fulfill in door to door is because they say, all right, I'm going to try the bare minimum. If I get a deal, then I'll get bought in. But as you guys know, it doesn't work that way. And every day, you have to get a new job. Every day, we're unemployed. And that's why I love door-to-door -door so much. And that's where I got addicted to it, partially because I could never go back to being a camp counselor, apparently. Sexual harassment <laughs> isn't cliche, all right? Let's just say I got canceled. So, can't cancel a 1099 contractor. Gotcha, Gavin Newsom. So, like I said, so I get a little tangent here, okay? Clearly I got some unmet needs. So we're going to go through every single one of these. Now go right now, put your phone away, stay present, stay focused, and hammer out A for each one of these. I want you to write out right now what you say. Don't pick up your phone, for fuck's sake. 30 minutes, guys, you can do it, okay? Write down every single objection for each one of these real quick. Okay, just do it. Start using your mind. You guys have sat there, you've eaten your popcorn, we've been up here entertaining, now it's your turn. Okay, real quick, write it out, the keynotes to it. Boom, 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 boom. Write them out. Okay, take a few minutes, write it out. This is your playbook. Now remember, leave space for B and C. Leave space for B and C. Need space for B and C. Got to make sure I'm on time here. So quick, guys, push this out quick. If you can't come up with this with a split second, that means you're not polished enough. You haven't practiced enough. You've been watching Netflix too much. You've been playing the new Diablo 4 too much. You've tried to take down Lilith. Don't ask me how I know all this. Every single one, A, then you're going to get B in a second, and then you're going to get C. You have to have this done quick. Speed of trust. High trust, high speed. Low trust, low speed. If you cannot get this out with a flash second for every single objection, that's going to correlate to low trust between you and your customer when they hit you with that. But if you can come back with a split second and a smile on your face and hit them with each one of those, holy crap. Clients are going to eat it up, and that's going to build more trust and conviction than all the positive affirmations you can say in the morning. All the, you know, Tony Robbins you listen to, all of it. Okay, bust it out, quick. Boom, 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 boom. Bust it out. Throw it up, write it down. Hey, David. Get me a glass of water, please. And I, I got a microphone, so the whispering is kind of ironic because everyone can hear me. But bust them out.
A speaker earlier talked about Conor McGregor was visualizing the arena before he would go out and perform. He'd visualize taking down his people. This is that very exercise put pen to paper right now. The very practice of this is starting to believe and put in your conviction and desire to your clients and to yourself. Because nothing beats self-confidence when you know anything they say, you know three ways to overcome it. And if your stuff isn't good, don't worry about it. We're going to give you two new examples today that you can utilize. All it is is it's like a, uh, life is just like this. your objections and the word tracks that you make. You're going to get better. You're going to make up your own. Then you're going to hear somebody else's. You're going to incorporate that. And then you're going to hear this guy say this thing and put it all together. And then essentially you have a beautiful masterpiece. And as artists, we have no painting that we paint. So... What is our art form as professional salesmen? Is the images we paint in our client's mind. And the words that you use paint those images. So the better that you can recollect them, the better that you can drop them at a drop of a dime, the more likely your clients will build trust in you. And the higher the trust, the higher the speed that when they go to ask for the clothes, they say yes. Because when you answered all of their questions with a drop of a dime, they're like, bro, this guy knows what he's doing. I like it. Let's do it. Bust him out. Bust him out. Oh, dude, that's so cool. You guys even have the timer up here for how long I have. Wow, dude, this is sick. Back when I was doing stand-up at the end, my, my shows were so fucking thrown together. They had a guy at the back of the audience giving the middle finger to me when I was done. It's terrible. It turned out to actually not even be, the guy didn't even work there. He was just didn't enjoy my jokes. My man. Seems like that's the only thing I can turn on these days. Jesus. Hey, thank you very much. Wow, God. All right, so bust it out. Two more minutes, two more minutes. Now, if you need to summarize it, that's fine. You don't need to put the whole entire talk tracks. But the point is, is to push you into urgency. Motion creates emotion. When I push you to write faster, you're getting stress put on you because I'm telling you to speed up. If I'm stressing you out, that means you're gonna be in a fight or flight mode, so everything that you write down, you're gonna remember more. You got roof twice, 14 and four. Oh boy, that's what happens when you give it to a Hess. <laughs> Fix it, right. That's a, that's a big one. Yeah, no, but there was a, it was a different roof. There was the holes in the roof, and then there's, I need a new roof. So he technically was correct, but I'm, uh, I pay very close attention, so. So hurry up, guys. Push it, push it, push it. I want to make this a harder environment while you're practicing. So when you play, it's going to be like a walk in the park. Push it out faster. Push it out faster. Right? Summarize. You guys should know all this. That was my impression of Birdman. Before I was a door-to-door -door salesman, I was a rapper. They called me... It was pest dizzle. 
And I was, uh, I was, uh, our name was Street Watch. And I was called Drop Step because I was a basketball player. So I'd, uh, I'd like write these terrible rhymes. And then my friends were like, bro, you suck. And then one night I'm like, just listened to everything on the radio and then just copied it and pretended it was my own. And then my friend's like, bro, you fucking stole that from Nas. I'm like, you're right. It's like, dude, you can't do that. I'm like, ah, fuck it. So, cool. Keep ripping, keep ripping. Sixty seconds, and if you don't get to them, that's fine. But stay in it, stay in it. Phone. Nothing is more important than you working on your business right now. Your phone pulls you into your business. Do not let the tail wag the dog. You are in control. Do not get distracted. Go all in on yourself. Think of this stuff. Put effort and energy towards it. Your customers are pissed. Tell them to F off. There's nothing you can do this second. They'll be there in 25 minutes when I'm done. Okay? Or tomorrow. They'll be there tomorrow too. Run your business. Don't let your business run you. Okay, finish up, finish up. All right, in a minute, you're going to find a person in the audience you don't know. You're going to make eye contact with them, stand up, and disperse throughout the room. And during this time, there's going to be partner A and partner B. Partner A is going to have the longer hair of the two of you. And partner A is going to ask partner B every single objection. And partner B is then going to overcome each objection. So for example, play with me for a second. Um, hit me with number one. Too old. Obviously, ma'am, but you're never too old to save money, right? right? Do you have two minutes where I can sit down and go over some stuff with you? Perfect. Obviously, ma'am, if you were interested, you'd probably have them on your roof, right? Right. Exactly. That's actually why we're here. We have a deal for people who aren't interested. Quick question. Is your name on the utility bill? Yes. Cool. Perfect. Next. Uh, too expensive. Too expensive. Obviously, everything in life is too expensive is worth it. I can tell by your cars you're a person that likes quality things, right? Right. Awesome. So the last time, when was uh, the utility company did something nice for you? Uh, it's been a while. Exactly. So that's actually why I'm here. There's a new program that just came out. Do you have a place where I can sit down and go over it with you? So that's the thing, guys, is having these at the drop of a dime on stage with 50 people watching you or whatever it is, 100, 2, 3,000, if you have that level of confidence, what does that do with the trust that you guys have after I just fucking hammered that? Okay, trust goes up, speed goes up. If trust goes down, speed goes down. If you start stuttering and start, uh, uh, their trust for you as the expert goes down and then you wonder why they tell you to think about it. So building trust and getting a longer in your presentation starts with hammering out each one of these things. So what you're gonna do in a second is you're gonna stand up, you're gonna find a partner, and you're gonna disperse around the room and we're gonna spend five minutes, so th six minutes, three minutes with one person, three minutes in the other, and go through each one of these objections, okay? So we're, right now it is uh, 4.53. We're gonna come back at our seats at five o'clock, find a partner, and coaches, if you could walk around and make sure everybody's working. Seven minutes, let's bust it out. Go, find your partner. Mm -mm -mm. Good work, good work. Thumbs up or thumbs down, how was that? Oh boy, when I say hell, you say yes, hell. Oh my goodness gracious. When I say Mike, you say O'Donnell, Mike. Oh my goodness gracious. Good, good, grab a seat. All right, guys, grab a seat. So, it was good practice, right? That was like 10 minutes. Do you know the golden rule of maintaining your garden according to the Buddhist philosophy? Is 3% of your day needs to be going towards maintenance. And so 3% of your day equates to 20 minutes. If you do 20 minutes of role playing with your partner a day, live, in person, going over these, that will develop professional polish faster than anything that you can do. 
The confidence in the world all comes what you say. Write this down. The depths of your conviction is more powerful than the peak of your logic. The depth of your conviction is more powerful than the peak of your logic. Your conviction starts with knowing exactly what your customers are going to hit you with. If you know exactly what they're going to say and three ways to overcome it, home run. So because for the sake of time, I don't have enough for you to go and share with your partner, but at the end of this, I want you to get back with your partners and then I want you to find out what their way to overcome it was. So then now you're going to have B and then I'm going to go through mine right now and give you C. Okay? Some of the stuff is good, some of it's bad, but I basically utilized a lot of stuff that I've done and I basically did a tour when I was in eight cities in six weeks and met with the number one setters and the number one closers in each individual market and taken what they've done and compiled it into my own repertoire. Question. The depth of your conviction is more powerful than the peak of your logic. You can talk people into all day on why solar is better for them, but if you don't believe it, they don't believe it. And so your belief in yourself is going to be the thing that sells. And to get belief in yourself starts with knowing your shit. And knowing your shit is not that hard. You just heard, you guys wrote it, now I'm going to give you some stuff, and then you can find people in here and what they overcome all of these objections, okay? So you heard the first three. Okay, I'm too old. Obviously, you're not too old to start saving money. When was the last time you looked into this? Yada, yada, yada. Boom, not interested, too expensive. Need a roof. Cool, perfect, absolutely. I'm sure you say that for a reason. What makes you say you need a new, new roof? Just so you're gonna play with me because you're right here. Okay, so when they say that, the first thing you do is motion creates emotion. I'm gonna say, okay, can you show me? And I'm gonna pull her off of her doorstep and I'm gonna get her to show me where she has problems with her roof. One of the hacks of door to door is if you're knocking on their door and you're talking to them in their post, their guards are up. Any excuse you can to pull them off the doorstep and bring them to the meter, to their roof, to their neighbor's house is a hack. It's a cheat code. Everyone's a badass at their front porch, but when you pull them to the curb, then the shit starts getting, you know, shit getting real. Okay? And then the big bad chihuahua ends up being a little mouse, you know what I mean? Okay, so I need to think about it. Same way as not interested. Obviously, you need to think about it. Our job's super complicated as well. We're investing a lot of money in this, so our company has to do its due diligence too as well. So that's where I would do a pullback. Okay, they need to think about it. So do we. We're spending all the money up front and you're just paying a monthly bill. Same thing. Okay, spouse. I never present to the spouse. I always get them there at the same time. The rule is, is you don't want to give too much information to the husband before the wife gets home or you don't want to give too much to the wife before the husband gets home because then they think they know how to sell it. When I, th when I find spouses, I do a lot of pullbacks to keep the ball in my court and I say, hey, I can't promise you that you guys will qualify for it, but there is a couple questions I have to ask when she is here. Do you know when she's going to be home? Is she a person usually here during the day or at night? When I ask for times, I always break it up into bigger, the beginning of the day or at night, so I can catch them and then I narrow it down to the time frame. So then cool, she's going to be here later tonight at 7 o'clock, perfect. I'm super slammed. If I can pop on by, just let her know a handsome guy's coming by, okay? Perfect, cool. I'm trans, so don't worry about it. <laughs> so I'll throw in something like that depending on how they handle like in the situation, okay? So do my own research, awesome. First thing I do when they say they need to do their own research, who researches solar more than us? Nobody. Okay, if you tried to sell your parents solar, would they tell you, oh, well, let me do the research on what you're selling? No, it means they don't trust you. Okay, so all research means is they don't trust you or believe what you're doing. So your job is to paint a vivid image of what they're going to be getting if they go forward with the process. Because realistically, who wants to do research and fucking starts looking into the analytics of how all these panels works? I mean, dude, you guys were up here when Nate was dropping all the stuff on batteries. Who wants to go and do all that stuff? The typical clients? Hell no. They want to drink a beer and parts of Chico, they want to just smoke their meth and hang out, okay? <laughs> That's all they want to do. So don't make it complicated. Give them compelling reasons to go forward. It starts with your conviction and then you bring up points. So I never get it, do their own research. You break it down to them, say, cool, absolutely. We're not even 100% sure we're gonna do the house and then I push it forward and continue to build value. I address it, I say, cool, pull back. And then I proceed forward with my statements and continue to build value in the process. Because when they say that means they need to do research, write that point in your process. So if it's one to 10, you're at step two. At this point, they're not comfortable going forward with you. At eight, 
The research is done because you gave them more information. They can get enough information to do their research. You provide the research in a two hour time period. They'll feel comfortable when you're at step eight of your process. At two, I'm not gonna get discouraged because of course they can't make enough research information to make the decision at this point. So I'm gonna keep talking, boom, build my value, go there. Bill's too low, absolutely, Mr. Customer. Most people, I don't know if you've heard about what Mary said is the reason why her bills are so low, she was scared to death about turning on her air conditioning in the summer, so she was really frugal with her electricity usage. For you, um, if you had unlimited electricity it didn't cost you a thing, would you use more currently than you're using? Awesome, perfect. You're the exact type of client I've been looking for. So that this way, hypothetically, if you had it, you would use it more. What other stuff would you use besides what you're currently doing if you truly had free electricity? Boom, perfect, perfect. So I'll start digging it out. Awesome. I'll take that into consideration if you're a good fit for the program. We'll get to that in a second. And then transition. Okay? Because the people with low bills are typically either frugal or it's just a little old lady that doesn't use much. And I just did a workshop for a group in... Um, uh, Oregon, right? Right now with NEM 3.0 where we're bill matching, maybe saving 10, 20 bucks a month. Who wants to take a guess what a group of 25 people in Oregon are charging compared to what they currently, what their current rates are? Going up, how much are they raising their bill on average? Okay, 40? Nope. 124 dollars they're raising every single customer's bill in Oregon. And they're killing it. So that's the thing, guys. You raise prices. Dude, we got it easy here in California. So I'm not too worried about the NEM thing. Okay, so the bill too low, people buy ownership over renting. People will spend more for ownership than they will renting. And that's my conviction. Okay, renting, hey, cool, sorry. You rent your house, sorry. Can't help you. Um, bad experience, awesome. Um, if you don't mind me asking, this is where I'll ask, ask I'll, I'll get them to open up more rather than a canned response. So um, if you don't mind me asking, what kind of bad experience did you hear your friend had? Um, they messed up their roof. Really? Okay. So the, whole, the, the installation company didn't have a warranty on it? I'm not sure. And they also, they ended up getting an extra bill too. Really? Got it. That makes sense. And it really depends on the type of programs people get when they sign up for solar. Given that there's five here in California, of the five, which one did your friend sign up with? Uh, I'm not sure. Exactly. So I asked that question. Puts the ball on my court. They have no idea. It's like, bro, well, if you buy an off-road car and you're wondering why you're not getting 45 miles to the gallon? It's like, shit, you bought the wrong product. Oh, that makes sense. Oh, I don't know, they paid it. Guys, do you know the five reasons, the five ways to get solar in California? Okay, you need to research that, so when you hit that, you know what it is. Who knows what they are? What's number one? Pace, okay, cash, lease, PPA, loan, And then lease, so PPA, lease, loan, cash, and uh, pace. Uh, pace. And pace? pace is basically, it's a government and, or a state ma uh, mandated program for lower income where they take, if you have equity up into your house, up to I think 70%. What is it, Jake, do you know? Pace? Yeah, it's, it's, I think the, the debt, uh, the, the amount of uh, stuff you have in your mortgage or basically the house, the, the debt to, debt to nah, it's not fucking debt equity. to income. Equity in your home, thank you. The equity in your home has to be at a certain percentage, but talk to your PACE representative and they can help you with it. You can't have no delinquencies. Yeah, you can't have any delinquencies. If you miss one payment on your mortgage, you don't qualify for it. But it's pretty cool for lower income because you don't need credit for that one. But those are the loans that if you don't do it right and you miss your payments on them, they take your house from you. So that's, that's the ones that got a lot of bad rap on it. But if it's sold right, it's a good deal. Okay? Um, so next, you want to wait. Remember, if they say they want to wait, that means what? They're not that sold. Okay? Okay, oh, shit, i got to go fast. So that's where I'm like, okay, cool. Obviously, we don't do anything today anyway. It's not like I have panels in my car out front. Look at my car. There's no panels in there. So if you sign up today, it's not like I'm going out there and slap them on your roof. Okay? Take away. Proceed. Uh, it's shit. Um, uh, awesome. I mean, what's, what's got you super sold on uh, PG&E? What's got you so sold on PGE? Whatever. Ask them so you, you switch it back onto their utility company. Sorry, the time's got me fucking stressing out. Uh, the company is going to be around awesome. Well, the good thing is you're not investing in companies. You're investing into panels. 
So the good thing is you're not investing into companies, you're investing into panels. The panels have a 25 year manufacturer warranty. Regardless of my, system, my company's gonna be around or not, your panels are gonna continue to work for you whether or not we blow up and, and get destroyed. Okay, the thing is these are not like cars where you need to do maintenance on them every four to six months. They sit and stay and then you get paid. That's how these things work. And very rarely you're gonna need somebody to go out there and do it, but for the odd, the likeliness that, that our company will go out of business, you can always find an electrician to go out and work on it. But the good thing is with my company, it's blah, 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 blah. Okay, whoever you use, doesn't matter. Or it does matter, but you wanna make sure. Good quality uh, installers like Ohm and uh, different around the country, but uh, I gotta go quick. Damaged roof, perfect. Well, that's actually why, why we have this new program. So if we do damage your roof, you have a 10 year warranty so that if anything happens during 10 years, you call us up, we fix your roof for you. So there's literally no problems with that. Do you think if you found damages, you'd have 10 years to find out and tell me, you think you could do that for me? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Cool, uh, tree maintenance. Um, uh, that's, that's a tricky one, that's more for the closers, but cool, my closer, if you're a setter, cool, my closer will assist, assist the situation and you don't have to put any money out of pocket, it's just an adder and you add into the loan, okay? Um, I don't wanna finance, perfect, quick question, did you buy your house cash or did you finance it? And they're like, well, we financed it, okay, what was the reason why you financed it? And then so what I'll do is I'll start digging and digging and digging on why they financed their home and I say, okay, why'd you stop renting? And then they start telling me more and more on why they stop renting. So it's the questions that I ask to get these guys to start diving into it and then um, get them sold on, okay, well, if they bought their home, they're gonna buy their solar. It's the same reason why they bought their home is the same reason why they're gonna continue to buy solar panels. It just has to make sense. If it's worth it, they'll do it. Basically, what they're saying is they don't wanna finance is because you haven't brought up enough compelling points to take out a loan to pay for your system. So that means you gotta continue to talk and build more value. Okay, I don't wanna change. Perfect, what was the main reason why you stuck with, uh, what was the main reason why you selected your utility company? And then what are they gonna say? I had no choice, awesome. Well, if you had a choice when you moved in, would you have looked at it or just said, screw it, first thing that's here, I'm just gonna hook it up? Did you shop for houses or did you say the first thing on the market you bought it? Oh shit, that's right, cool. When you look for cars, did you go car shopping or just throw your credit card out the window and the first thing it hit you bought? It's the same thing with the utility company. The only issue is, is you didn't have a choice. Now you do. So the thing is, if the change makes more sense, do it. If the change doesn't make sense, we're gonna tell you no. So my job is just to give you the numbers because there's two reasons why people get solar or people do not get solar. Number one, they don't qualify for it or number two, it doesn't make sense. And at this point in the process, we don't know if you qualify for it or not. So then it leads us up with number two is you don't understand how it makes sense. So obviously you say you don't want to, make, do, want to change, what's the big thing that you don't understand and why you don't want to change? So I asked them that, okay? Um, I don't like the way it looks. I, I totally understand. My wife doesn't like the way I look, but guess what? We got three kids, baby. <laughs> so a little joke like that and then move on, okay? People don't buy panels because of the way it looks. They buy panels because of the way it makes their checking account look. What color are your shingles? No one will know. Cool. Most people don't know what color their shingles are. Awesome, you don't even know what color your shingles are, you won't even remember the panels up there. That's how this things work. It's a set it and forget it program, okay? Uh, we're doing another project, awesome. How much money, how much of a good, or how much of an IRR is that project giving you? Well, it's an IRR, instant rate of return. Okay, uh, nothing, cool. Well, the thing is, is with the solar, the longer we wait, the less incentivizing it gets. So that's why clients that are smart and putting two and two together are pushing this project to the top, especially with the deal that we've got going on today while I'm in this neighborhood. Have you, when was the last time you looked into this? You haven't? Oh, crap, okay, let's check this out. Grab your power bill and I'll show you how this works. Next, I don't care. Uh, Cool, that basically means that you haven't captivated their attention. I would pull them off the doorstep, bring them over to their meter and say, Mr. Customer, why does the meter go back and forth here? Because they want you to start producing your own power on site. And so what we're doing is if you qualify for that program, you'll actually get incentivized. And the cool thing is if you truly don't care, you don't have to do it, but that's what the utility company wants you to do because the people that go solar are the ones that are gonna get their rates locked in. The people that don't are gonna be the ones that are paying for the people that went solar. So the more that you don't care, the more you're gonna pay. So the thing is it makes, it makes no difference to me because you're gonna pay for solar with me whether you sign up today or you don't sign up at all. Because the thing is, is they're gonna keep taxing you until you get it. I'm sure you're familiar with how that works, right? You don't do what the government tells you and they're gonna to continue to fine you. For example, you go down the street, you travel 130 miles an hour through a school zone and a cop sees you, what happens? 
You get a ticket, right? And then to get rid of that ticket, you have to spend what? Money. money. So is it fair to say that if you break the law, you have to spend money? If you do what the government doesn't want you to do, you spend money. What's the opposite, Mr. Customer? If you do what they say, they reward you. So they're literally rewarding you to do this. The government passed a $400 billion law called the Green New Deal to get you incentivized to go forward with this program. So that's how I'd handle these guys. And I hope you were taking notes. It was a lot of stuff. But remember, if you could take anything away, tack a couple little nuggets and practice, drill, and rehearse 20 minutes a day. When I was in acting school, I'd look in the mirror and I'd read my script and then I'd flip it over, hold it down, and try to remember it as much as possible. That stuff is boring. It sucks, but I'm telling you, in school and at a play, at the end, you got a standing ovation or you got a grade card. At the end of your play, your show, every door that you go to, if you've done a good job, instead of clapping or instead of a report card, you got a check. And that is what's really fun. And that's what school doesn't teach you to do is because no one cares about good grades. They care about getting money in their account when they get older, right? And so that's the addiction. The more you play it, the more it becomes fun. And then when you get good, it's literally a game. You come to customers' homes and you're smiling. You're like, I know everything you're going to say. Let's just cut the bullshit, grab up, practice drill and rehearse. And with that being said, thank you guys for your time. I'm out. But, but. One last thing before I bring up James here. Uh, let's pull up that slide. Um, so Solar Gives Back is, a, is a, a project that I started and a bunch of guys in here involved with it. We're doing a Zoom call tomorrow. We're gonna go down to South Africa and build a school. It's my third year doing it. So if you guys ever wanna get out and do something cool in the world for the sake of solar, come join us. I'm doing an information call tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. or 9 a.m. tomorrow that we're gonna go over a bunch of stuff and explain how the project works, but it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. And if you guys ever wanna do something more than yourselves, come down and join us in Africa. We're gonna build a school and put solar panels on a community center. So it's gonna be sick as shit. So that being said, much love. Thanks for having me.